Good afternoon. I'm very happy to be here. And uh, uh, for my wife and I, it's the first time in Brazil and first time in South America. And uh, it was actually absolutely amazing experience in many ways. I really come I'm, uh, and we're coming back to the United States with so many great impressions about the country and about the people and about the food, of course. Um, and um, I hope that the presentation today will be uh, equally uh, interesting to you all as well. Um, I'd like to talk to you today about the subject which I'm very much invested in. I think that's one of the best things that we came out uh, or came up in, in my lab. And I think there are a lot of correlations between uh, the research work which is going on in the Department of Chemistry and in, in, in physics uh, as well here in uh, San Carlos. It also has a lot of connotations to the one of the or the key problems which uh, are related to Brazil economy as well as to economy in general. But what I'm trying to do now is to look at it from a little bit of a top perspective. So what I'd like to do today is to talk to you about the self-assembly of nanoparticles. And, um, and the major things that I'd like to convey to you is uh, the uh, findings about its dynamics, how changeable they are. Also the findings about the complexity of the systems that can be produced in this way. And also about many surprising and possibly controversial findings in respect to uh, replication of biological properties by the nanoparticles. So that correlation between biology and nanoparticles, nanomaterials, you, you will be able to trace it throughout the talk. And I will try to point out the most important parts. Um, before I do all that, I'll just give you a very quick rundown of uh, the, what we do in uh, the lab at the University of Michigan. A uh, large part of my group is working on the composite materials, which uh, are produced by the technique called LBL assembly. The technique itself is very simple and very uh, versatile. So what you do is basically absorb one nanometer scale film uh, as you uh, d d dip uh, the substrate in uh, the dispersion, then rinse it, then deposit one more. And in this way, you put on the composite material. It turns out that the composite made by this technique has a number of amazing properties which are not possible to get by any other way. And we apply them for LEDs, for uh, other electronic devices, a lot of sensing work, and uh, one part of it which is particularly uh, appears to me very important is implants in the brain. If there are many diseases which are related to the brain, which we don't quite uh, understand them in how to cure. And this is one uh, approach to do that. Here I will talk a lot about the nanoscale assemblies of the particles and self-organization. This has a lot of application in optical devices as well as the, a number of very unusual materials such as negative refractive index materials. I will also talk about some catalytical applications as well. And the last part which uh, seem to be very remote from the first two uh, are uh, the creation of artificial organs. Uh, they are produced by using these scaffolds, a very regular and controllable uh, matrices to organize the cell in a particular way. It turns out that organization of cells in the body makes a great effect of how, on how they uh, respond to, for instance, drugs. And from that project, we develop artificial liver, or artificial bone marrow, and artificial thymus. Uh, interestingly enough, advances in this part are made possible by advances in composites. 
And now we're working on how to use these three-dimensional scaffolds in order to understand the delivery of anti-cancer drugs by using nanoparticles. So that's uh, the second topic. Um, Self-organization is important for a number of the reasons. Of course, there are lots of fundamental interesting things. For instance, where the beginning of the uh, of life is. We are self-organized structures. We are self-regulating structures. But some point that started, at which point it started, where in organics be, be, be becomes smart. And that's one of the aspects of self-organization. But besides that, uh, these are the effects and bioenvironmental effects of the nanoparticles. It has a lot to do with the uh, low energy production of many devices. For instance, the problem in photovoltaics, thank you, uh, in photovoltaics is not the efficiency, is the cost. We can make good photovoltaic devices, but they're not economically feasible, feasible because the production requires lots of energy. Let's harness the ability of nanoparticles to self-organize in, in complex structures like this. There are a lot of interesting aspects in self-organization in mechanics and rheology. For instance, the proteins, and I come back to that subject, can self-organize, and that makes us strong. And that's what really strong. I mean, the bones, the cartilage, these are self-organized structures. Catalysis. Uh, these are the particles of traditional uh, catalysts from platinum, iridium, and, uh, and other materials. It's becoming quite obvious now that the capabilities of engineer chemical reactions, and I, and I hope Professor Bear would agree with me, I, maybe not, uh, but ability of individual nanoparticles made from one material is at the limit, is at the end of their capability. So now we need to make two, three, engineer the structures much more uh, precisely, and that's when self-organization comes in. And of course, the, 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 the devices, sensors and electronics, that's one of the examples. The, these are gold nanorods, and uh, they could be used much easier if uh, the organization is improved. OK, so now I, I made, hopefully, the case Self-organization is important. What's then? We need to understand what the forces involved in it. If we understand them, we can control it. We need to understand what are the requirements to building blocks should be. So the nanoparticles can self-organize. Do they, uh, do they self-organize all the time? What kind of solvent we need to use? What kind of geometries? So this is not uh, settled down, and this still needs to be established. And of course, uh, the, uh, the p p p parallel be between cells, for instance, and machinery inside the humans, and the machinery that could potentially be in the nanoparticle assemblies is, is in the future. And if we can make complex assemblies, we can potentially make complex functionalities as well. So with that, that said, what do we need to do in order to understand that, in order to figure out the forces, in order to figure out the complexities? We need to have the model structures. And there are a number of those. For instance, uh, the, uh, the su su super lattices of nanoparticles. And today, with Pro Professor Edson Leite, we, we discussed one of the greatest examples of super lattices uh, from zirconium oxide particles. There are a number of uh, model systems which are connected by DNA. The Chad Merkin, Oleg Gang are, are very good examples of, of, of these people. Um, there are also potentially be some other protein based superstructures, uh, and all of them has importance. Uh, th uh, what I would like to uh, to show you that when we uh, look at this kind of structures, which are made from very monodispersed particles, isotropic particles, or we use biological means 
to self-organize them. We basically underutilize the ability of inorganic materials to create complex and underutilize the smartness of these materials. Uh, to be quite honest, we, uh, we work in these fields as well, and uh, there are a number of ways, I mean, how uh, they can contribute. For instance, in this kind of devices connecting the nanowires, the latest work here uh, was done together with Professor Xu, my collaborator in China, these are the structures from nanorods and nanoparticles connected by uh, strands of DNA. Here, we were trying to figure out how to utilize the gaps between the particles and utilize it for biological needs. For instance, this kind of structures can be used as the small, uh, basically, detectors sensors inside the cells by using surface enhanced Raman scattering uh, because uh, this uh, signal, first of all, enhanced by gold and secondly, very sensitive to any kind of chemical changes. They have importance. There are many interesting things that you can do with the DNA assemblies, but it's still not feasible to utilize them in the larger sense for the technology in general, for catalysis. And you can observe many interesting effects. For instance, this kind of structures, they permeate through the cells like viruses. And we can create artificial vi viruses in this way. But if we transition to larger scale structures or to larger scale te te technologies, this is just cute demonstration and possibly has some applications, but it, it cannot be applied in the same way. Now, in order to address uh, photovoltaics, catalysis, sensing, and bioenvironmental effects, we really need to switch to something else. We need to make the system simple. The uh, simplicity, l absence of the stabilizers, uh, 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 if you want, not having the monodispersity of the particles. It's something which, made, uh, which makes it cheap, which something it makes it very easy to utilize, as long as we understand what has to be done in the forces, in the interaction, how to engineer them. And, uh, I, would, uh, and I would suggest here that if we look at anisotropy of shapes, anisotropy of interactions of nanoparticles in general, we can do that with much, with much smaller problems, environmental including, uh, as with the uniform uh, uh, nanoparticles. For that reason, we decided to create a new model system. And I apologize if the few of you already saw this slide. Um, we decided to use cadmium telluride <laughs> as the basis. They have a tetrahedral shape. And depending on the synthetic conditions, we can actually change uh, the shape from the perfect tetrahedron to the truncated uh, uh, tetrahedron. This control of the shape uh, leads to the control of anisotropy of interactions and how they assemble. And in the next few slides, you will see the results of that. So for now, I say that this could be a good model, a good uh, schematic of these nanoparticles. What do we need to do in order to see its assembly? We need to reduce the electrostatic repulsion. 